the fact they bought 22 copies of How to Run a Government, but I didn't see any sign that any use was made of those. <laughs> and the nail polish they bought. I mean, there's a lot that's very funny about Nicola Sturgeon, but not that she intended. Uh, let's talk about a subject close to, to my heart, uh, political books. Nicola Sturgeon is writing a deeply personal and revealing memoir, charting her life from a shy child to the longest ever serving Scottish First Minister. Last year, I spoke to literary agent Martin Redfern, who told me political books should be funny and show the politician's essential humanity. I was just rereading the uh, Alan Clark entry when he's he's um, accused of being drunk at the dispatch box. And it, you know, it is absolutely hilarious. It's a brilliant piece of political theatre, but also just a kind of humorous writing. It's an incredibly funny... Uh, it, it's just an incredibly funny passage. And I think you... You, you want that degree of self-deprecation, I think. Right? You want to see the kind of human side of a politician, which, um, I mean, let's face it, most of these diaries come out once they've left office. Mm. Or indeed, um, in some cases, when, they, when they've died. Absolutely. Um, and, 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 it's, and finally, you get to kind of see the human side of, of the politician who's been given the kind of politician's answers for years and years when, you know, when questioned. That was the literary agent Martin Redfern. Uh, Dorothy, will you be reading Nicola Sturgeon's memoirs? I certainly will. Um, she says they're going to be deeply revealing, and I think there'll be many people um, born in Scotland mm. or in Scotland who will want to read all about Nicola Sturgeon. And perhaps she can give us the secrets of how she brought about such a decline in the health and education in Scotland. But I noticed she hasn't yet got a title. And I would like her uh, to help her with that. Maybe the decline and fall of Nicola Sturgeon. That would be a good one. Yeah, decline and fall, particularly given uh, what's befallen Nicola Sturgeon uh, in recent weeks. Uh, Patrick, hearing Martin Redfern, who's sold and edited a lot of these books, I, I, I know, uh, he actually edited Martin, uh, Alex Salmon's uh, memoir. Um, deeply personal and revealing, you know, should be funny and show a politician's humanity. You know, you were a sketch writer for some years, saw all these politicians up close. Are those qualities you necessarily associate with Nicola Sturgeon in particular and Scots Nuts in general? I'm not sure how self-examining she is or self-critical. I mean, they are at their best when they reveal some humanity. I suspect, looking at the blurb, there's going to be lots of talking up the poor me and my... my working class, shy background in Ayrshire, and now look where I got to. Um, I, I, I can't associate Sturgeon with any great personal re revelations. So I'm not sure how much I'm anticipating it. She needs to be honest for it, for it to sell, I think, and, and give some good good gossip. Um, but of course, it's, it's just one of many coming out. We've got the Nadine Doris uh, novel, sorry, um, uh, non-fiction coming out in uh, September. The political assassination of Boris Johnson. Yes, and yeah. then, then there's Boris Johnson's own memoirs. Mm. So, um, but you know, Often, I mentioned Chris Mullin earlier, often it's the people you don't think of who produce the best books. You know, not the biggest names can be the best writers. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Alan Clark, too, not a massive name at yeah. the time. Obviously, he was a historian as well. But, you know, not people at the very, very top rank of politics. Chip Channon, another one who was never, you know, of cabinet rank. Obviously, he was a socialite as well. Well, it's his frustration that makes his exactly. diet. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, this is good news, however, for the uh, Scottish Parliament's library. Because did you see the story we had last week uh, from a Freedom of Information request about how much money has been spent on gizmos left, right and centre, including black pudding, was interesting. And six copies of a book of the collected speeches of Nicola Sturgeon had been purchased for the library. So presumably a few hundred copies of this have already been ordered. One yeah. for each MSP. <laughs> um, Dorothy, do you, do you associate, do you think, you know, Patrick was saying Nicola Sturgeon will need to be honest, frank, self-critical. Are those qualities you associate with her? I don't associate those with Nicola Sturgeon. Um, but I, I, I do love some of these things and their expenses. The fact they bought 22 copies of How to Run a Government, but I didn't see any sign that any use was made of those. <laughs> and the nail polish they bought. I mean, there's a lot that's very funny about Nicola Sturgeon, but not that she intended. No, exactly. Exactly. I'm looking forward to her doing her book tour in the motorhome. No. <laughs> they, they well, once it's uh, once it's released, uh, once it's released from. Back. Yeah, yes. indeed, indeed. Um, 
And obviously, it's very strange that this is all coming out against the backdrop, Dorothy, of the investigation into the SNP. It seems a curious time to announce that you're, you've just been, uh, you've just sold a book. Well, I mean, she's been interviewed by the police, so maybe that's where she got the idea of being deeply revealing. Who knows? Who knows? I think there's a lot more to hear about. Nicola Sturgeon's time in office. Indeed. Indeed. Well, look, it's been a very, you know, the SNP famed for message discipline, you know, very close-knit circle of people around Nicola Sturgeon and Alex Hammond for years, took that party from opposition to government, and then it all, all very spectacularly collapsed, both the personal relationships and the po political project over the past years. So if, if she is candidate, it should be a very, very revealing read, but, you know, let's see whether she is.